What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Chris Gunther Show. Thank you so much for watching. Remember to like and share this video. I would greatly appreciate it. A few years ago, I was invited to cover the Stellar Awards in Las Vegas. And this group was the first group that I interviewed along with my big bro, Kenny Reyes. And they've been a blessing to me ever since. So without any further ado, the Chris Gunther Show welcomes Men of God's Heart. What's up with you, fellas? We here, man. Hey, what up? Hey, hey. What up? Good to see you. Yeah. It's good to see y'all too, man. It's definitely been a little uh, minute since we actually had a chance to see each other. Unfortunately, a global pandemic messed everything up. Absolutely. Absolutely. Right. <laughs> but it's just, man, it's just great to uh, see you guys. Good to see everybody's doing good. So I understand that we have a new single that has just been released, correct? Hey. It's out. Oh, yeah. It's out. Yeah. <laughs> so we're excited it. about it. So excited. Go get it. Tell us a little bit about it. Yo, the uh, single dropped on January the 22nd. Uh, it's called The Cry of a Nation. And it's, it's basically geared to pretty much the climate that has took place um, for the last couple years. You know, we're experiencing a pandemic. There's been a lot of uh, rioting and a lot of uh, uh, racial tension that has took place in our country. And, um, and Yah has a message, or God has a message for us where he's letting us know that it's time for us to come back to repent unto God. And so right now we've putting that message out there right now, let everybody know everything that's going on. Everybody's distracted in their minds. Everybody's worrying about this. Everybody's worrying about that. They were going here and there, but we forgot about God. <laughs> and, and he's looking like, wait a minute, I got to shut everything down. Mm -hmm. I got to shut churches down. I got to shut uh, entertainment down. I got to shut everything down so y'all's attention can come back to me. And so to come back to me, it's all about repentance. We have placed things above him. And he's like, at this point, like, hey, I'm tired of that. <laughs> I, I'm a jealous God. I have no other God before me. So it's the song is about coming back to our first love, coming back to him. And so we're excited. We're excited about it and it's ministry. All day. What was the process like to create this song, especially during all of these crazy and perilous times? Um, Ra, you want to answer that? I'll, I'll shoot. I'm about to say, listen. Uh, <laughs> I, I I believe when we when we recorded this song, it's amazing to me how this how this all even came together uh, as far as the recording of the song because we actually we had discussed it as a group. I think it was two weeks ago how four years ago, around the date of us dropping the Cry of a Nation, we had a single out called Signs. And so, matter of fact, previously to the Stellar Awards, we had just dropped Signs maybe the year, that that year, either the year before that year, leading up to the Stellars, we had dropped um, a single called Signs. And so, like, these, these singles that we've been dropping, they've been, like, major staples and testaments to the times and the climate of what's been going on around us. So four years later, to drop another song, I'm playing, because, <laughs> I mean, we looked at other dates to try to drop this single. We looked at other dates, but to drop a song of this magnitude, I'm playing around the same time to the day uh, was crazy. When we recorded the song, we, 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 we had an idea of kind of what it, what it might do, but we didn't really know until it came mm -hmm. out. The day that it came out and the day that it came out, um, we received so many, so many emails and inboxes and text messages and, of just people that were just identifying with the lyrics and identifying with the uh, with the music itself. Um, I believe it took Stone, uh, I think he said about a, a year, year and a half to write this uh, mm -hmm. because he receiving just the just the the different parts of the song, pretty much receiving the song in part. As opposed to just sitting down and writing, banging one song out and being done with it, it was just it was a process. So, yeah, man, it it was the process is it, it was it was it was definitely uh it was definitely crazy because like I said we I I know I'm speaking for me I had no clue like I said we recorded it but then when it dropped and hit the streets, mm -hmm. man it it's it's totally uh it's, it's superseding what we expect. Were you guys able to record it in person or did you have to record from home and then send out your parts? Um, well, the crazy thing about this, we started recording. Mark, we started recording around what, 2019? 19. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We started, uh, it was so, October. 
October 2019. So the pandemic didn't really get crazy until March 2020 here and where we were at in Columbus, Ohio. So we were actually in the studio uh, recording together. Again, this was before the, the pandemic and the COVID thing was really on the horizon. We didn't mm-hmm. really know yet how powerful and how much of a impact it was going to make upon the country at that point. I will be the first to admit once COVID originally came and once we first heard about it, I did not take it serious. I thought because this country was so advanced in technology and science that it was just going to go away. And then once I started seeing things get shut down, ultimately I realized how serious this was. What were some of the things that you guys as a group had to shut down in order to get back to hearing what God was telling you. Marvin, you could answer that, sir. Um, what did we have to shut down? We had to shut down our time together. Um, that's one of the main things because we spent so much time together, uh, coming together physically in prayer and, and those kind of things. Um, you know, that's how we got our bite. That's how we had our juices is being together. And, uh, but the wonderful thing about that is, is God always creates another way. And we were able to come together by way of this medium, uh, whether it be Zoom or whether it be FaceTime. And we were able to come together and pray and still be creative um, and still come up with different ideas and that kind of thing. So nothing was totally lost. Um, it's just our time together physically. Uh, that is what That was the main thing that we lost. And I hope I'm answering the question the way you're asking it. But that's the main thing uh, was pretty much our physical time together. Even though you guys did not get a chance to spend a lot of physical time together, do you feel that the bond as a group became greater? Oh, without question. Without question, because um, even uh, with this particular meeting, we all went through certain things, different things in our individual lives that uh, caused us to come closer together, that caused us to stay in contact, consistent contact. We're not just a group of, of guys that just sing together and then that's it. We literally know everything about each other. We know what's happening in each other's lives. We know what's going on. We know we 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 know each other for real. And this just brought us together much closer, much closer. And we we the one thing about men of God's heart, everybody knows that we are about each other. We always have been, but actually, this took our closeness to another level. It was, it's crazy. It's really crazy. So when we come back together, it's gonna be bananas. I picked up on that the first time I met you guys in Vegas. You know, I could tell that the camaraderie was there. The chemistry was there on stage and off stage. How great is it to be able to minister with guys that are literally just after God's heart? That's a good question for you, John. (laughs) Man, it's priceless. I mean, when you go on stage and you look to your left and your right and all of us are on the same page with God and with this ministry, like that's really, you can't really compare that to nobody. It's no competition, no nothing. We all love each other. We all brothers for real and we love God. So that right there, that's just, I don't know. I can't even put into words, honestly. It's just a feeling that can't be compared to nothing. I absolutely love it. 2020 has been a year that has literally challenged a lot of people's faith. What advice would you give to anybody that, is currently struggling in their faith or they're currently struggling to believe if God is even real. <laughs> I believe this is the time frame now. You know, if you're struggling, the struggle, the uncomfortableness is good. It's good. Because I believe everything that's not grounded is being shaken. Everything that, that has, does not have a foundation is being shaken. So it's being shaken for a reason. And as I stated earlier, the shaking is causing us to come back to him. And the Bible said, those that he loves, he chases them. So basically, a lot of times when we're struggling and we're going through things, it's not so much that it's a bad thing, but sometimes there's certain things that's called a necessary evil. A necessary evil has a job. A necessary e- evil causes you to come back to a place and it pushes you back to a place where only God can help you. Only God can turn it around. Only God can make a way. So we're in a necessary evil situation right now called a pandemic. And it's not evil evil as we think, but it's thrusting us and it's pushing us to the throne of God. He's the only one that's able to help us. He's the only one that's able to redeem us. He's the only one that's able to turn everything around. So if you're struggling right now, count it as joy. Count it as joy because many afflictions of the righteous 
but the Lord is able to deliver us out of them all. In this world, we're going to have tribulations, but we must be of good cheer. For he said, I've overcome the world, so you can. But you have to be in a place and a posture of understanding that I got you here, not to hurt you, but it's working out for your good. It's bringing you back to the place where you need to be. Can I add Do to you that, feel I that? Oh, yeah, 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 sure. I, there, there's, there's a scripture in the Bible that, and, and I love it when you go through those things and things are kind of uncertain and you're a little um, pressed and you're a little down. It's very simple in Psalm 61. It says that when my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to that rock. That's the answer right there. When you're overwhelmed, you don't know what's happening. When my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock. There's another scripture that says, I will lift up mine eyes to the hills where my help comes from. That's your answer to add along with what my big brother just said. We, we, we know the answer and Christ is always the answer. Even though we know that because we are believers, we've had a lot of people last year that were once with the church that now are no longer affiliated with church or with the religion in general. What would you say to them to try to get them to either come back, not even so much to the quote unquote church, but just to come back to a relationship with God? Yeah. Right, you want to answer that? Uh, yeah, um, I would definitely say, uh, you know, while you have a chance, uh, definitely uh, Marvin Winans had a had an awesome lyric when he uh, when he was saying trust in God, but he went on to say, uh, trust in God. Tomorrow's sun will let you know your life's not done. So, so if you're breathing, if you're living, you have a chance to come back into the newness of salvation. You have a chance. Um, you know, I know we've seen a lot. Uh, you know, in, in just the church per se, we've seen a lot. Uh, we've seen, uh, you know, we've seen motives. We've seen agendas. We've seen not some, some, some people and, and man themselves have, has, has, has placed things and instituted things that, that, that made church or the kingdom have a bad outlook. But, mm -hmm. but, but now this is about, this is about you and your personal relationship with your savior. Where do you want to spend eternity? I believe a personal relationship. Right. You got it. And, you know, so I definitely didn't mean to uh, to cut you off. I was just, you know, basically because I think the signal was kind of going in and out down here. But all I was getting ready to say was I believe personal salvation is the greatest thing that any of us can have as a group. Do you guys still believe in, you know, holding each other accountable? In because, you know, sometimes what happens is a lot of times in these groups, what will happen is they don't care what you're doing behind the scenes as long as you're still coming to the rehearsals, as long as you're still, quote unquote, performing <laughs> and y'all still right. selling records. So right. are you guys still holding each other accountable even behind the scenes? Uh, let me jump in on that, Ron. Um, yeah. The standard of men of God's heart is accountability. That's how we made it almost 20 years into the industry. Um, without accountability, there's no strength to stand on. Mm -hmm. um, many times on the road, let's just be honest. It's just Chris, you're going there tonight. Let's just be honest. On the road, you got all kinds of distractions. You got women. You got, uh, a, you know, women that's giving you attention. You know, it's easy for you to, to, to get caught. You got drugs. You got weed. Mm -hmm. You got drinks. You got alcohol. You got all that out there. You got everything. Homosexuality. You got it all out here. You know what I'm saying? So it's out there for you. And some people might say, like, in gospel? Yes, in gospel. You have all of that. So what keeps men of God's heart to the point where we're together is because what we do every night, from, at least from Monday, Tuesday, and Thursday, and it used to be Monday through Friday. But every night we come together, every night of those days, we come together and we pray, we, we, we talk about the word, and we commune with each other. We talk uh -huh. about our lives and our days and what's going on. I don't know no other group that does that, me personally. And I don't know every group, but us personally, I don't know no other group that pretty much comes together every week in dialogue, in prayer, in conversation, and in accountability. Hey, brother, what's going on with you? Are you all right? You know what I'm saying? We have a close-knit bond where I can tell these brothers my feelings. If I got something going on in my household, it's not like, man, I can't go to the gods because they're going to judge me. We don't have that type of thing going on here. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Because ain't none of us perfect. In this 20 years, we right. all didn't have something that was almost like, oh, help us. <laughs> we need you to hold our hand right now, God. You know what I mean? But we made it. We only made it because of the accountability where I'm able to go to my brother like, hey, man, you tripping right now, bro. 
I see what's going on, man. Come on up out of that. Come up out of that, bro. Matter of fact, get on my back. And let me carry you up out of that. Many, many nights I had to call Ron. Many nights I called Marvin. One or two o'clock in the morning. You know what I mean? Hey, bro, I need to talk to you, man. This is killing me right now. Could you help me, bro? I'm, I'm, I'm going down for the last count. He, you ain't mm-hmm. going down, brother, while I'm here. You ain't going down. And that, these, these no, are things right. that we communicate. You know what I mean? And it's real. This ain't for camera. This ain't for fluff. This ain't for the Chris Gunther show. This is real deal. Men of God's heart stuff right here. What have been Absolutely. some of the greatest moments that you guys have shared as a group? <laughs> <laughs> wow. I'll tackle that. <laughs> let me jump in on that. I say, you want to say something, um, Steve? <laughs> yeah, let me jump in on that. Some of the greatest moments, you know, for me personally that we have shared as a group um, were a lot of times when we were on the road and we were traveling together and we just got to experience, you know, being around each other, real ministry, you know, no ego tripping, nobody is high minded, nobody's trying to outdo each other. It's just real brotherly love, you know, a bond, a fellowship that we get to spend together. So for, you know, for me, a lot of those great moments were the time that we got to spend together on the road. But when the pandemic hit, that was another big thing that shut us down was us being able to travel and minister in different places. All right, Brother Chris, when you're talking about um, like specific Mm -hmm. um, things, specifically, if I may, guys, I don't know if y'all can jump in. Um, Gosh, the, the, the Javits Center in Manhattan where we opened for In Vogue and Bobby Brown um, doing a video shoot in Los Angeles. I mean, just the stellar awards. Gosh, that was amazing. Um, <laughs> yeah. That was just like incredible. I mean, we can really go on because God has really shown us a lot of favor. Five cats born and raised in Columbus, Ohio, that uh, many counted out, but mm-hmm. God said not so and really blessed us. Um, I would say, if I can share this, guys, that a moment for me personally, is when these boys came together and prayed for me that the Lord would give me a new kidney and the Lord did just that. So that right, right there wow. for me was a personal highlight for me, for more of it, because these boys decided to come together and pray for me almost every night until the Lord answered. So we have so many highlights, but man, I could go on all day with that one, but I, I'll try to be quick with my answers. I know, I know interview <laughs> etiquette. <laughs> Well, the beauty of my show is I kind of control the flow. So, I mean, ain't nothing wrong with a brother testifying and giving a testimony just because somebody might have needed to hear that. You know, a lot of things this past year have been bad for so many people. You know, people have lost jobs, lost their homes. Some people have even lost their, you know, lives. But the fact that we're still here goes to show you that, you know, God is real and he's not done with any of us. And I appreciate you guys for coming on here tonight. I know we got to get ready to jump up out of here. And I also wanted to put this you know, question out because here we are in a year where we're still a little unsure of what's going to happen, but we're glad that we're still here. What are some of the things that the people can expect from you guys this year? Wow. Um, if everything, as you said, Chris, everything pans out, the way we want it to do or want it to play out. Um, look for another single, um, prayerfully. And either the end of this year, we want the end of this year, and we might not get it, but we hope in a year, a new Men of God's Heart album. And people have been waiting for this. Our last one that we put out in 2017, got Stella Award nominated, Billboard charting, all the accolades and whatnot. And people have been asking, it's been four years. It's, 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 it's been a long time <laughs> since they got a whole album, Ron, Marvin, and John, and Steve. So they asking for it. I think they're going to get it, Chris. We, we pray, pray for us, man. If everything goes, by the end of the year, we might, be, we might be kicking it, man. I hope so. I hope we can kick it outside this pandemic. That's for sure. <laughs> Damn, <laughs> right? In Vegas. <laughs> In Vegas, you hear me? Absolutely. Man, Vegas would be so much fun because that's where I got a chance to like meet you guys. I'll share this story. So yeah. me, we get there, I think a few days before the big event happens. And it's myself and you know, my big bro partner, you know, in you know, this whole thing, Kenny Reyes. And Kenny was getting ready to check us in. And I remember it was Elder Lakiba Wallace and you guys as manager. Shout out to Big Sis Latoya. 
And we did a like a quick five minute interview right there. And after the interview, Kenny was like, I feel the anointing in that group. <laughs> wow. Exactly what he said, man. I was wow. like, same here, bro. I'm like, that's how you know y'all some real brothers. Before we jump up out of here, man, y'all know this weekend is Super Bowl Sunday. Who y'all got? Uh, Brady, man. Brady gonna do it. It's in Tampa. It's already set up for him, man. I hate to say it like that. <laughs> I hate to say it like I that. I sound so distraught about it, though. Hey, Brady gonna get what is this be ring number seven, six, seven, <laughs> four, seven. Oh yeah, man. He's gonna get it. Touch his life. Touch his life. <laughs> Anybody else got your predictions? Man, I'm I'm I'm, I'm a Kansas City fan this weekend. <laughs> <laughs> I'm un, I'm an underdog, man. I don't know if the Kansas City's an underdog. They might be underdog because of Tom Brady, and Tom Brady always gets his way. And you know, uh, <laughs> we know how it works with Tom Brady, man. So uh, I'm gonna come on Kansas City. I'm looking for Kansas. God, City. That just I felt the hateration like it was. I I know, it, <laughs> it was very hater kind. Yeah, I, don't, that I don't like cheaters. I don't, I don't like cheaters, man. I don't have a dog, man. I'm a Cowboys fan, so we had a bad year. So oh, I'm praying for Dallas. I'm praying for Dallas. Man, they need it all, man. Yeah. Goodness. Dallas Good needs man. it all. Well, guys, I greatly appreciate you for coming on here tonight, Men of God's Heart. Give us some more information about that single. How we can support. Sure, sure. Uh, you can support us by uh, going to all digital outlets, the private nation. If you don't have any of our past records, Redemption, Shine, the Men of God's Heart, the Stellar World Records, all of our music is on all digital outlets. You can follow us on Facebook, the official Men of God's Heart, uh, Instagram and Twitter, at Men of God's Heart, all one word. Also, www.menofgodsheart.com. Our, our store, too, is on our website. So we do have our store on our website as well. You can go there and buy. But yeah, all digital outlets. Amazon Got it. Apple. Nothing. Love it. Love it. Nothing else needs to be asked, ladies and gentlemen. Men of God's heart on the Chris Gunner Show. Fellas, thank y'all so much for your time today, man. Greatly appreciate y'all. Thank you, y'all. Thank you so much.